everyone and welcome back to day two of finding your purpose a free mini course by me and yesterday we went through if you haven't seen yesterday it's really important that you go back so go back and watch and do part one because otherwise part two isn't probably going to make any sense today i'm taking you through two new uh, profiles and again these these ones are pretty good the first one is um it's probably a little bit like it's geared towards people who are looking how to market themselves but actually it's really important no matter what you're going to end up doing because it will help you to overcome any kind of gaps you know if your employer is like why is this not happening you can connect to people in this particular way and it's really important to know that um and the second one is the Enneagram. It's been used for many years in businesses of all kinds, even in corporations and in offices and stuff. They do this sort of thing as like, uh, you know, like professional development. They're both pretty good. And this, as we talked about yesterday, this will add to your picture of where you're going to go, who you're, you know, what you're going to end up doing, all that kind of thing. So... And just to reiterate what I said yesterday was that all of these things are not going to give you a job title. I don't want you to focus on a job title. I want you to start just thinking about, you know, what you enjoy doing, what's important to you and, and try and think of like moments when you've had these kind of moments of magic or these moments where things have started to make sense or you've been able to be yourself or you've loved what you're doing, uh, not necessarily even in a, in a job kind of context but just just anything so all of this information i'm going to ask you to sit with it for a couple of days and then tomorrow i'm going to take you through this visioning exercise and that's this is where the fun you know gets really fun so this first couple of days like it's pretty relaxed so i'm just going to take you through these profiles and uh, get you to it's just a bit of a chance for self-exploration and getting to know yourself in a new way that you might not have done before all right so we're going to go to so first of all uh links for this by the way are at muxharrishill.com forward slash work purpose dash worksheets it's it's linked in the facebook group in the announcement section and also in your reminder emails it's it'll be the home for i've just set this up yesterday it'll be the home for all of the replays all of the links all of the worksheets everything that you're going to need and um yeah so if you need to find anything it's all on there so your first one is your first link is going to take you to sourced magic What's your intuitive gift? So I won't take you through the entire quiz now because that's, you can, but you can see what kind of thing it is. It's, it's eight pages of questions. Um, you can click on whatever. And by the way, there might be some in here that you feel where you feel strongly about different options. You can take the test more than once. Excuse me. And uh, you might be a blend of a few different things. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then I, so this is what it looks like. I'll take you to my results and give you an idea and just talk you through what it kind of looks like. So on your results page, you've got a load of stuff at the beginning trying to sell you a toolkit, but for the purpose of today, I'm going to take you to the actual results and all the information. So there's six different types of magicians. Um, and I am an expression magician. So a lot of what I'm doing is all around like expressing yourself, explaining things, uh, artistic things like, you know, uh, playing an instrument, singing, painting is anything that you're kind of creating for other people not necessarily for other people, like you can do it for yourself, but in the context of what we're doing today, that's where people really connect with what I'm doing is when I'm explaining things, I'm teaching people, I'm creating things, telling stories, like that's all a big part of it. And the other types, you've got things like compassion magician. So um, I know that Jack, who's on the call, he's a compa compassion magician. 
And so that magic re really comes through as a compassion magician when you're expressing care, when you're empathizing, when you're verbalizing um, compassion, basically in, in any way, that's when things really come through. You've also got uh, expansion magician. There are, there are six in there, but it, it'll explain. It's not particularly complicated. So in your day two worksheet, I've given you a few things to fill in to kind of take notice of. So first of all, magician type. The key to my magic is different ways I could convey my magic are. Now this, this worksheet is less filling it in like yesterday. And this is actually starting to get you to think about, you know, your own answers. Okay. Um, and you've also got activities I know are already, I already enjoy expressing my magic or would like to try. So you'll find a lot of inspiration in these, uh, in this results page. So just to take you through the expression magician a little bit. All right, so as you scroll down, it will give you a little bit of a uh, an idea of like things that you normally struggle with. So for, for an expression magician, it says, did you know that expression magicians struggle the most with planning out their marketing? They must design it differently and it feels risky, but trust it. People want to hear you learn why and so much more in my in the interactive course, blah, blah, blah. So just have a read through this page. It's going to talk to you a lot about like it's going to mention marketing a lot now don't worry too much about that you don't have to become a marketing expert like it's not necessarily saying anything about marketing you might not even want to become self-employed or run your own business if you think about marketing like this could come into things like your cv uh how you interview how you explain your gifts like even as you're writing like your cv or you know, a cover letter for a job application, if you want to stay in employment, anything like this is where this comes in real in handy really, really well. And also when people are asking you what you're good at, this is a better thing to say, rather than the technical skills that you have. Obviously, if you're going into a technical job, they'll need to know that as well. But this is really important because you'll be able to explain much better who you are, what you're good at, and how they can best work with you. And like, make you a really kind of indispensable member of a team they'll also be able to nurture you and recognize like the things that you can offer and do really really well for a company so it's massively mutual mutually beneficial providing you're in a company that actually thinks about things like that which obviously you can't control um Yep. So this part is just saying that this might be your primary type, but you might have a couple of other types underneath there as well. Uh, I haven't bothered. Like I'm very, I'm, I'm not a details person. I just want an answer and just get on with it. Um, but if I was to guess, my secondary would probably be compassion. I talk a lot about not judging. I talk a lot very openly about like shame and joy and, you know, um, it's really, it's a really important value of mine to like accept people for where they are, for them to not feel shame about their issues or things that they're struggling with and so on. So that's very much, that's a, probably a strong secondary for me. All right. So, um, I just remembered that actually when you fill this in, you give them an email address and in that email address is when, where they send you the really detailed stuff. And I realize I've not got that in front of me, but it's really self-explanatory. Have a read through, as I said before, go back to the day two worksheet and just fill in, like start thinking about how it can relate to what you're doing. Um, if you feel very strongly that you are more than one type and like those things are really important, you can write, you can write those things down as well. Like, I'm not going to stop you. You're grown up. <laughs> this is your worksheet. You can fill it in how you like. Hey, Rebecca, thanks for joining us. So that was the sourced magician. And I will just copy that. The link so you can fill that in. And so Rebecca, I don't know, uh, 
how when you joined because I didn't see because I was like explaining but I'm just taking you through two new profiles today and you're just going to read those through as I said yesterday like don't worry about coming up with any kind of ideas just sit with this just explore like watch this back on the replay it will be available not long after our session today it took me a little bit yesterday to set all of the replay pages up and just to show you, uh, you have this link in the email and in the Facebook group. I can't get to, oh, there we go. But I've created uh, a web page, especially for today. Sorry. I've created a, a web page especially for. It's really difficult to see. <laughs> for all of the replays and everything you want, it's uh, the link is in your email, uh, in your reminder emails. But if you, as you scroll down, you've got the replay of day one. You've got all of your links and stuff that you need there, and then we've got day two. The replay will be up there uh, later after today's session, so you've got access to everything that you need. It's all in one place. Okay, now we're going to go on to the second profile, which is the Enneagram. Now, this is really, really lengthy. There's seven different pages like this of questions, so it takes quite a while. And if past me was clever, I would have saved the results page of this one. The Enneagram one. The Enneagram, yeah. Oh, um, two seconds. Oh, mine. I was just thinking you might have looked at. Sorry about him. Yeah, I'm happy for you to use my one. Thank you. Um, but that's the one do you remember when we did it, I saved it as a PDF. Oh, <laughs> that's such a clever thing to do, Jack. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bear with me, I'll just bring up this PDF and I'll share it with you and I'll go through it. All right, so this is and this is Jack's Enneagram. So basically there are nine different types and we'll, we'll all be a bit of all of them mostly. I mean, Jack hasn't got any three whatsoever, but basically all of these types are to do with personality types and things that we're naturally really good at. Um, my highest is an eight, which means, which is very much in a leadership role. And, but Jack's predominant one is six. And this, this describes Jack to a T, the loyal and the skeptical. And it gives you an example of like characters you might know. So you've got Katniss Everdeen from Hunger Games, Davos Seaworth from Game of Thrones. Bilbo Baggins, Jack, that's hilarious. If you don't know, Jack is extremely tall. He's even taller than me. <laughs> so that's just really made me laugh. <laughs> anyway, um, sixes are attracted to loyalty, have a lot of admiration for it and often embody it. They want a safer world. They, they are often perceived as faithful, devoted, careful and reliable. And that is extremely true of Jack. They are skeptical, suspicious, and imaginative beings that don't like to be caught off guard. Thus, they tend to anticipate problems and dangers. This, so this is a really good example of why things like this feeds really well into finding out what your purpose is, or at least a step in the right direction, because a lot of this stuff makes Jack really good to have on a team, which is partly why uh, we've started working together, because he notices things, he, he, his, his head is really in the game and he's really analytical. So anything that you come up with in your own uh, profile should really help you to start understanding what you're naturally intuitively good at. And it's got nothing to do with jobs. It's more about like what qualities you're bringing to any environment that you're working in. And also to realize actually when you're not getting to live out this stuff, that's when you get depressed, anxious, you don't want to go to work, you don't feel appreciated. Excuse me. And that's when you end up doing jobs that you hate that are not fulfilling and you end up selling your soul a little bit. So 
this is also a reminder of something I said yesterday, which is that you might not, oh, I think I said it yesterday, but just in case, you might be really good at something and you might have a skill for something, but it might not be exciting. Okay, which is why we're gonna to get to this visioning part tomorrow in tomorrow's training. But it's really important to sort of remember these little different things and kind of start to connect to these different senses or these different parts of yourself. And it's really good to just have, have these things, like have a clear idea because it makes the visioning so much easier, but we'll go through that tomorrow. Um, so just a little bit more on Jack's uh, profile. They question, number six is question everything that, have, that has not been proven and pay a lot of attention to people's hidden intentions. Uh, this is really useful, especially for people like me. I don't have time a lot of the time to think about people's intentions. I just, I just want to get on with everything. I just want to lead. Like I'm not, I'm not bothered about the details of things as much. Um, it'll often take me ages to realise that something's going on with somebody, and I'll be like, oh yeah. <laughs> and it's often my intuition that does that job for me because, like, logically, I'm not thinking about that stuff at all. And. It also means so, you know, sixes are really good, really, really good to have to have on a team. Um, they'll be, you know, like I've always been an eight, like even from when I was, um, you know, my very first apprenticeship or even like earlier jobs than that. I would have big, like really big picture thoughts about what we should be doing, things that would work, like how we should probably improve systems or bring in new systems and stuff like that. Not so much the technology side of it, but you know, I was always thinking big picture and like how things could be run more efficiently and like how we could simplify and, you know, boost sales and, you know, collaborations and stuff like that. And I would irritate the crap out of all of my employers because they were like, just do your job. You know, and a lot of the time I was doing this when I was like sweeping floors, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't employed to have ideas. I was employed to do the menial stuff and shut up and then go home. So part of the reason I think that I never quite got into like I never I was never particularly happy in jobs the only job I've ever had that I was happy in I was basically happy because I was handed a business to run and he didn't breathe down my neck uh, the owner all he wanted me to do was just to make sure that there was that we had good takings good money at the end of the week and other than that he didn't give a rat's butt so jobs that make the most of these things that we're, I'm taking you through today are going to be so much more mag magical to you they're, they're you're really going to shine in these situations so whether it's a job or whether it's something you end up doing this is really good stuff to know so you've got other things on here I won't take you through all of it and But there's there's loads of really good stuff on here. And, and again, everything I'm taking you through this week is free. So it also gives you ideas about um, intersecting, um, what's the word? Like numbers, you know, like different profiles that will also have an impact on what you're doing. Um, it also talks about like potential weaknesses or things that you need to be kind of, I don't really like this idea of weaknesses, just just things that you're likely to do that might trip you up if you're not aware of them. Um, it also talks about like how to how to be in harmony, how to be balanced and imbalanced. And that's about it, really. But suffice to say, like this is a really, really um, useful, very, very useful thing to have. So I'm just going to put the link in here. But as I said, all of these links are available on the purpose course um, web page that I took you through earlier. It's at mcsharrishill.com forward slash purpose dash worksheets. I've bloody closed it now. Don't worry, I'm getting it back. But by the way, if you Google uh, Enneagram tests, there are loads of different ones, but I've seen quite a few and I, I particularly like this one. I think it's a little bit uh, more fun to read. 
but there are quite a few on there I think I found some other ones in the past that have got like pie charts and stuff if you like that sort of thing but but you know there's loads of them around they're all exactly the same thing as far as I'm aware so on your worksheet you want to so the first bit was all about your expression magic and all of that the second part uh, the Enneagram my primary Enneagram type is number which is the so it will give you so um, number six Jax was the skeptic and the loyal uh, my, I'm an eight so I'm uh, leadership so there'll be other things in there and by the way like none not, none of these numbers are better than the other they're all just like really important um, things to know about yourself uh, personality types and all of them are useful all of them are just as important as another you couldn't have all leaders or all supporters or something you know what I mean like it needs to be a blend like they're all good and I've got a, a bit on your worksheet my other strong types are oh, I've got a chance to write it and then at the bottom of your worksheet it just says now sit with all of this information and feel into the different aspects of it all try to think about when your gifts and the co corresponding shadows so the things that kind of like out of balance or the kind of like uncomfortable not so positive side of it uh, have shown up in your experience write it down if it helps so your homework after today is to do all of these profiles and just sit with them maybe read them through a couple of times maybe highlight like interact with the material as much as you can uh, if you've printed it off you may want to highlight some stuff you may want to pick out the bits that really feel good and pick out the bits that don't you feel like yeah it's sort of true but it's not like really important for me and just start to make a list somewhere or to just start to really think about you know start bringing all of these aspects together so I've taken you through four different profiles today by the way if you want to do a bonus one if this isn't enough information for you and to be to be honest, I'd be surprised if this wasn't enough, because I think there's a lot of information in all of this. Um, but if that's still not enough for you, you can also look up your Myers-Briggs profile and your Jungian archetype. So just make a make a copy of this somewhere if you want to. But you don't you don't have to do those extra two. But you know, I think I think they're useful to have if, if you feel like you need more information or you want to build a really big picture, but most people only need these first four that I've taken you through. Um but it, you know, it will just add to the picture. If you want to make as rich a picture as possible, you really feel like you're starting from scratch and you need as much information as you possibly can get your hands on, then go for it. Like, look these ones up as well. They're particularly good. I think Myers-Briggs is actually based on Jungian archetypes, but I think Jungian archetypes is only 12 and Myers-Briggs is 16 different things. And um, it's important to mention that with Myers-Briggs and Jungian archetypes, they're not personality. They're not personality tests as such. They're a little bit more like maybe things that you lean towards or things. It's more about sort of kind of behaviors and beliefs, I would say. It's more towards that sort of thing. Um, but you don't need it. If if you if the four that I've taken you through is going to be enough, then that's absolutely fine. Um, and those two, you could even wait until a little bit later, particularly if you get to a point where you want to start marketing yourself or coming up with um, a business name or something like that. Those are really good to kind of give you a little bit of creative inspiration around branding. Um, but I, I don't think you need it. I don't think you need it. So I've taken you through those two today, as I mentioned. In fact, I'll, let me put the link for the course material in here so if you want to open this link and then save it somewhere it will give you access to all of this stuff like whenever you need it are there any questions so far Rebecca have you have you kept up Is, have you got any questions okay 
All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. As I said, tomorrow we're going to go through this visioning. So I really want to make sure. Oh, you're welcome, Rebecca. No, that's fine. Um, as I said, sit with all of the information that we've gone through in the last couple of days, all of the, the four profiles that I've taken you through. So just to remind you, that is your human design type, gene keys, the Enneagram and your magician type. So go through all of those again, sit with them and just get this like emotional like sense of what it is to kind of live in this way in in a way that is like really intuitive to you and feels really aligned and feels really positive obviously if, there, if there's something in in a profile that you think oh I'm, I don't really vibe with that then don't worry about it a lot of these things that you know the the whole reason I'm taking you through this stuff is just to help you to get an idea of like a, a general sense, okay? A lot of these details are only here to inspire. It's not here to tell you, like, oh, you have to do this, or you have to do that, okay? All right, well, if that's all for today, I will see you tomorrow. And just a little reminder, if you haven't joined the Facebook group already, please do. And also, if the, it's not too late for new people to join, they can catch up. And um, if anybody wants to win a free hours coaching with me, then all you have to do is refer some friends and uh yeah whoever refers the most number of people who gets involved uh, at least in the facebook group or on the uh live trainings or anything like that you can win a free hour with me which is usually worth about 400 quid so get involved if you want a free hour and it can be about anything you want if you we could talk about like your cv we could talk about like setting up a business any anything that you want to do or even if you've already got a business we could talk about how we can apply all of this stuff to your marketing or how we can improve what it is that you're doing how to get more leads how to get more traction and do it all in a way that's like suits you with all of this profile information all right, have a great rest of the day and I will see you all tomorrow. Mm -hmm.